All right, just a quick on the next thing, we're talking about some possible preference, uh, possible forms for preferences, possible restrictions on preferences. And then we'll consider whether they satisfy these axioms. Uh, now, one thing that's mentioned is value functions, which I mentioned before. And it says, uh, we say, I just said this a moment ago, but if, if preferences are characterized by value functions, we have x, uh, we prefer for to y, if and only if, okay, IFF, if and only if, sometimes you see the arrow in both directions, it means equivalent, this implies this and vice versa, it means, I guess in set theory, these would be the exact same sets of things, if and only if, v of x greater than or equal to v of y. Okay, so here x and y could be a bundle of different bundles of, 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 of things you might be able to consume. Okay, we don't know what units it's expressed in, we don't know how many of them there are in the set, uh, but we can think of that there may be a function that translates from all elements of the set, all com or all combinations of elements of the set, you can think of all the things that could be in the choice set, and then some combination of all of them translates that to, and then maps it to a real number, perhaps a positive real number, but that doesn't matter whether it's positive or not. Um, and then I judge which one I prefer based on which has a higher value of that function. So if I say cat, a cat and a pinata, I, the, the, the fu value function of cat and pinata is 12. Value function of two pinatas is 10. Value function of a single pinata is 15. Okay, that's violated another assumption we're going to be talking about later, but in theory it could be there. Well then, among those, the highest uh, value of the value function is just one pinata. That's going to violate a monotonicity condition we'll get to later. But, and then that would be my most preferred option. And if I'm choosing according to my preferences, I would choose that. So that's value functions. This is very close to what we'll call utility functions later. And if you ask me what the difference was, I would have to think about it. So I'm not going to give an answer right then. Okay. Um, now, one, basically one type of value function would be a distance function, okay? Um, so, you know, we can imagine all sorts of, we can imagine all sorts of ways that the elements of the set, of the, or the, the things that I could choose from could be mapped into some sort of numerical representation, right? We could, we could think of it as, you know, perhaps, perhaps they all have certain, um, Perhaps each element of the set has a certain amount of different goods, and we think about or different different uh, qualities of goods. You could think about putting a numeric representation to those, right? But and this is a problem faced by people trying to do, among other things, a value to do sort of a, when you're trying to consider how much would people like this product versus this product? How similar are two products to one another? This this gets into some deep mathematical stuff that people in data science use. Uh, it's not. It's often not clear. Like well. How do I assess units of uh, taste against units of size against units of uh, aroma, you know, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, or for our, for a hotel or a holiday, how do I assess the the you know this one has more amenity? How do I think? How do I even think about is this vacation more similar to this vacation? You know, similar hotels, but then how much do we weight a hotel? They're all in different units. Okay. So, but we could imagine that each bundle of goods can be mapped in some sort of multi-dimensional space. So just, just for an example, we can have X, Y, and Z. Each bundle of good has a place, it has, let's say, this much, let's think about a life. A life has this much meaning, it has this much pure pleasure, and what's a third way that you could value a life? Uh, life. What? Not a life. Yeah, your life. Like, oh. One life would have this much feeling of deep meaning, okay. this much feeling of deep pleasure, and what's the third thing? Length. Length. Right, and length or health or something like that, right? So you could put it right here. And I could put another life that's like much more shallow, 
but also much more pleasurable and you know what the third dimension is and much longer. Right? So then I have to think about well, what is a distance function? How do I think about the distance between these things in multiple dimensions? Well, I have to know how to quantify these. I'd have to think about how to relate to different quantifications, but suppose you could do. And in other cases, this is much easier to do. Like I could, I could, I can think about, you know, uh, I'm not coming up with a great example right here. Okay, I could, actually it's probably difficult in all cases, but we can think about measuring this in some units, let's say relative to the standard deviation, and all of these relative to, this, to the standard error. So we normalize all of these, and then we can use, for instance, the Euclidean distance between these things, which is, uh, which would be, let's say this is, let's say this is x and this is y, the Euclidean distance, which I'm not asking you to know right now, although it's kind of nice to know, would be, if in three dimensions, it would be x1 minus the distance between, what are we, d, distance between x and y, Sorry, I've, I've mucked the notation here. Okay, let's call this A and B. Okay, that's going to be much easier to do. Okay, the distance between point A and point B, right, point A has a certain amount of X, a certain amount of Y, and a certain amount of B. So A, let's call it, is X A, Y A, Z A, maybe lowercase. B is uh, X B, Y B, Z B. I was say, what's the distance between these two? Well, of course, it's going to matter how do I weigh differences along each of these margins, right? So you can think of taxi cab distance, just subtract these and add up the subtractions. The Euclidean distance is how we measure things in phys distances in physical space. We would say, okay, let's take the sum across all of these elements. Here would be. Uh, X, Y, Z of, uh, I, haven't, I haven't written this in great notation, so let me, let me just do it element by element. So distance between A and B here would sit with the three elements, would simply be X, A minus X, B. But now, you gotta do something so that distances can't, of negative and positive distances don't cancel out. And what Euclidean does is it says square this, add the square of the distance between uh, y, a, and b, or the difference between y, a, and y, b, add the square of the distance between z, a, and z, b, and then, in, it, this won't matter for the utility, but it does for physical distance, and then take the square root, or, or basically the, take it to the power of one half. Okay. okay, I always go off too long, okay. so. What this distance function idea is, is some people might say, I know what the perfect life is. Uh, I'm going to pretend to be literary here and say that Dostoevsky said that all perfect, all successful marriages are alike, but all unsuccessful are unalike in different ways. Okay, but maybe you have the idea of what a perfect marriage was, and this is it. And I value, I suppose I can think about, again, being an economist here, but computer scientists do this too. I can think about valuing different partners, perhaps different marriages, by their distance from the ideal. So I say, okay, this partner, you know, in all three dimensions, I've, I've, I've measured it, I've, I've, whatever, this dimension, this dimension, this dimension. I use the Euclidean norm, this one, this dimension, and this one comes up with a distance of, distance of, let's say, Mary is, uh, equal to 10, she's 10 away from the ideal, and uh, distance of George, watch me being politically correct here, is equal to uh, 5, okay? So, but the distance function, the idea is that the value of this thing, so the value of a marriage with Mary is equal to the negative of the distance function, negative 10, because she's 10 away from ideal. Value of George is negative five. George is better than Mary. I prefer George to Mary, okay? Uh, 
Yeah, so I think that illustrates the differences between, perhaps between the value function in general and the particular distance function. Let me, I think now's a good time to, to pause the tape and erase the board. Sorry, you tell I'm an old school, I say pause the tape.